Hey, I'm Srini, host and founder of the Unmistakable Creative Podcast and the creator of Maximize Your Output with Mem. And in this video, what I'm going to show you is how you can get better results when you use your prompts with Mem's Smart Writing Edit Tool. And if you haven't checked it out, be sure to check out our free ultimate guide to building a second brain. I'll include a link in the description below. Now, let's get to the tutorial. What I want to go over in this video is some best practices and advanced techniques for writing prompts so that you get better output from Smart Write or Edit. So one of the key things that people have to learn how to do when they're using AI tools like Smart Write and Edit is to talk to AI. So you probably had that experience where you might use a tool like ChatGPT or even Smart Write and Edit, and you ask it to produce something and you're not happy with the output or it doesn't look the way that you expected it to look. And often that's because of the fact that you're not using clear and concise language that is easy to understand. And the example that I gave a friend when he was working with me on this was that if he was working with a human employee and he gave very unclear instructions and that employee did a terrible job on the task, then whose fault is it? It's not really the employee's fault, but it's his fault because he gave such unclear instructions. And that's the thing you have to really remember with any of these AI tools is that you need to generate very clear prompts. In fact, this is becoming such an important skill that companies are now hiring prompt engineers whose entire job it is to craft effective prompts. And apparently it's a six-figure job. So you can see that this is becoming very important in the world that we live in, particularly if you want to be able to use AI tools effectively. What I want to do is go through a few different examples of how we can use different prompts to get better output from SmartWrite and Edit. Some of these are going to be the standard ones you've seen before in some of my other videos but we'll go through each one just for a recap. So the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna generate a one paragraph summary of this book. And you can either type the word one paragraph summary, which usually will work, but you might wanna be more specific and you could say generate a one paragraph summary. Then it knows exactly what you're talking about. And what you'll see here is the fact that the output is much more coherent it sounds better and it actually is exactly what you wanted. And again, depending on the length of whatever it is that you're trying to summarize, this could take anywhere from 25 seconds to 30 seconds. And there we go. So we basically got a one paragraph summary of a pretty long set of book notes here. And the fact that I typed in generate a one paragraph summary, uh, it knows that we're referencing this. Now, if I had said one paragraph summary, it might not have come back perfectly. So that's one example. Now let's look at another example here. What we're going to do is we're going to pull up a podcast transcript from a recent interview that I did with Stephen Kotler on aging and peak performance. So you can see here that I actually added a one paragraph summary already. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to create a bulleted list of the key takeaways from this interview. So what I'm going to say is create a bulleted list of key takeaways from this transcript. And sometimes what will happen when we tell it to create a bulleted list is it might end up creating a paragraph. It's something that I've seen before. So the other thing we can do then is we can just write the words bulleted list at the top without using a smart write and edit command and then use the command that says, write this for me, and it will then generate a bulleted list. And again, because of the fact that this is a pretty lengthy podcast transcript, this will take anywhere between 25 to 30 seconds. It just really depends on how big the content is. And as you can see here in this case, it's during a longer one. So you can see here that what it did was basically it didn't quite get the context here. So I probably because I put the word transcript in, it actually ended up mangling this. So let's try this one more time. And we're going to say generate bullet list of key takeaways from text below. And the nice thing is, as you saw, I made a typo when I typed in takeaways, but it still will work because it knows what you're talking about. But I don't recommend that you actually type your prompts with typos in them. Again, that takes us back to the idea of clear and concise communication. and Typing things properly is probably a good part of being clear with the smart writing edit tool in terms of what you want it to do. So the more specific and clear you are with your prompts, the better it's going to be. So you can see here, it did exactly what we uh, 
or talking about where I asked for a bulleted list, but it actually came up with a paragraph. So in that case, what you're going to have to do is do something like this, 10 bullets, key takeaways. And a lot of times it actually helps if you actually just use a bullet to start the prompt. And so I'm going to just say this for me, and then it will do it. So this is another part of crafting effective prompts with Smart Rating Edit is it's going to require some iteration. And I know people are always concerned about burning through their credits, but if you get into this practice of iteration, you'll actually get better at crafting prompts. So you might burn credits early on, but then you'll get much more efficient in terms of how you use these credits. So that way you get better output from the prompts that you are writing. So in this case, you can see it's doing its thing, it's working. And I think because of the fact that we use the bullet, so you can see here, it actually goofed again. So I'm not sure why it keeps doing that, but this is actually one of those things that you have to tolerate when it comes to AI. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna highlight this and say 10 takeaways. And let's see if it actually converts this header into the bulleted list. So you can see here already we're running into a few problems, partially because of the fact that it's not really understanding the prompt that I'm giving it, even though I feel like it, I'm being clear. So that's one big thing when it comes to communicating with AI and writing prompts, you are gonna have to iterate a handful of times to get the output that you want. And as you can see, now we finally got the list that we're looking for. So for future reference, now I know that the best way to do this is to actually create the header and highlight it. And then I get my 10 key takeaways. That's what's really important here is that you learn from each prompt. So what you can see here is now I have the paragraph, I have a key takeaways, and I've effectively progressively summarized everything that Stephen Kotler has said in this interview. So now let's look at a few more examples. So in this case, what you can see here is we have the ability to convert a list of notes into well-written paragraphs. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually just select these bullet points and say, convert this list of notes into two paragraphs. And what it will do then is it will take these bullets that we have and it will generate two paragraphs based on whatever is here. And again, your mileage tends to vary in terms of how long these things take. Sometimes they're really fast, sometimes they're slow. It just depends on one, how dense the content is. In this case, it's dealing with all of the things that we have here below, the transcript and everything else. And so you can see here now we've got the two paragraphs as well from those key takeaways that were in bullets. Now, one of the other things that I realized when I was writing this artificially intelligent creative was that you could actually uh, combine a bunch of bidirectional links together and actually turn those into paragraphs as well. So we're going to go back to our outline here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just create a new mem for this example. So that way it doesn't end up cluttering this. So I'm just going to say example, turning bidirectional links into well-written paragraphs. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this into a new mem. And then I'm going to go ahead and open it. And what we'll do now is we'll add a few bidirectional links. So earlier this morning, I was just looking at a few of my notes on Curiosity. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring in those notes. You can just say Curiosity as a building block of flourishing. All right, so we've got three or four different notes on Curiosity. And what I'm going to do is say, turn this into three paragraphs. about curiosity. And the cool thing about this is because I take smart notes, when I use this, it actually uses my own language from those notes. It's just combining and rearranging them. So I've copied this. I'm going to go ahead and add it here. So you can see here, it gave me the two paragraphs in this case, or maybe it should have been three, but that's fine. But you can see here that we can actually combine a group of bidirectional links together which allows us to then turn those links into paragraphs. And if you write the notes in your own words, all Mem Smart Write and Edit is really doing is rearranging them in such a way that they can be used for something else. So this actually ends up being very useful, for example, when you wanna take your notes and turn them into something like a blog post. So we've gone over some basic best practices for this. Now let's look at some advanced techniques for 
crafting smart. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to automate progressive summarization. So these are my notes from a, a book called Your Brain on Art. And so when you are progressively summarizing things, there are a couple of layers that Tiago Forte talks about. And the first is bolding or underlining. And the nice thing is that Smart Write and Edit can actually help us do that. So what I'm just going to do here is I'm going to say bold key phrases. And what this will do is it will actually take care of this first layer of progressive summarization for me. And you can see here that like most Smart Write and Edit commands, depending on how much text you're working with, it can take anywhere between 20 to 30 seconds to come up with the output that you're looking for. In my previous videos, I've always just cut this part and gone straight to the output, but I wanted to show you this in terms of how it actually works. All right, so you can see here in this case, it didn't do a very good job. Now, what would normally happen here is that it would actually add in asterisks. So what we're going to do is we're going to try this again. So here's what I want to do. I'm going to say bold key phrases. And hopefully this time it'll give us the output that we're actually seeking. So in this video, I wanted to actually show you the mistakes as well, partially because I want you to see that sometimes it's going to require iteration to get the output that you want. So in this case, we're having some trouble with this particular set of notes. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick another set from below, and I'm just going to say bold key phrases here. And so I'm looks like I'm having a bit of trouble this time. So normally this works pretty well. I've done it for a handful of notes, but for some reason today, it seems to be acting up a little bit. And I guess that's the nature of, of AI is that it's not always going to be perfect. Uh, no matter what AI tool you're using, your mileage is always going to vary. But the better you get at crafting prompts, the, the better you'll get. Okay, so you can see here that it actually did bold something. So we're going to go ahead and replace it. And you can see here that it actually bolded the default mode network and so that's the, the basic overview of how we might bold key phrases. Now, that's the first layer of progressive summarization. But let's say that we wanted to also have a, a set of 10 bullets, you know, key takeaways. So we'll do what we did before in the other note. And we're just going to go ahead and say 10 bullets. I'm going to remove that. And I'm just going to say bullet a list of key takeaways. And you can see here in just a matter of seconds, we've basically got all the sort of key takeaways from this book without having to drill down into the entire book. And then finally, what we can do is I can say one paragraph summary. So rather than having to do all of this yourself for your notes, you can actually go through and you can progressively summarize a set of book notes. You could do this with a podcast transcript. And what we've done here, and the reason that this is a more advanced technique for writing prompts is that we've combined a series of different prompts together. So we did our key takeaways, we've got our summary, we bolded some of the key phrases. The, the bolding is the one that is going to be hit or miss from time to time, as you noticed here in this video, but it's actually very useful as well. All right, so now we've done progressive summarization. Let's go into one other example, which is to expand and revise a particular note. So. This note right here on the trifecta of cognitive processing is one that I wrote based on the book, Your Brain on Art. So I'm going to do two things here, and we're going to basically use this same note for both of these examples. What I'm going to do is first, I'm going to say, I don't want it to expand my section or, or the quotes that I use. I only want it to expand this. So I'm going to just go ahead and remove the reference for now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, expand this note and revise it. And that's a fairly simple command, but what it's going to do is it's going to write a longer note than the one that I have here. And we could have said, expand this note to three paragraphs if we wanted to. And you can see here, it didn't actually split it into paragraphs, but it could have. So that's one example of what we might do in terms of expanding this note. So I'm going to put my quote back here really quick. So the other thing I want to do Let's say, for example, I wanted to use this note to come up with potential ideas for blog posts. Then what I could do is I could say something like generate 
five ideas for a blog post based on the content of this note. Then what it will do is it will come back and it will give me five different ideas. So you can see here, I have five different ideas that could be potential blog posts. And what I can do then is I can just say, I have this you know set of five blog post ideas. I could turn that into a mem if I wanted to. But this actually ends up being really useful when you're looking at your notes and maybe you come away from a note and you don't really have any new ideas for what you might want to write about. And just by highlighting a note and using Smart Write and Edit, we can actually turn those into new ideas for a blog post that we might want to write. So we're going to go back to our video outline here. And that basically is an overview of some of the best practices for Smart Write and Edit, both sort of advanced and basic ones. But there are a couple of things that I would recommend. The first is to experiment and try different things. I, even if you're concerned about burning your credits, the truth is if you are a bit more liberal in terms of using them and conducting experiments early on, then what you're going to do is you're going to start to create your own collection of smart write and edit prompts. And I would recommend that you actually save them in a mem because every time you do one of these prompts, you're going to learn something about how something works or why it doesn't work. As you saw with the example of my bolding the key phrases, I was running into some issues and that just made me think that, okay, maybe I need to rework this prompt so that it works better. But if you basically create a collection of your own smart write and edit prompts and save them in a mem, then what's going to happen at that point is you're no longer going to have this issue where you're burning through credits because you know exactly what prompt will lead to what output. Now, what might happen in, in that case is, let's say the content of the note changes, then you're going to run into some issues. But again, those are always going to be opportunities to revise and adjust your prompts. This is true for any AI tool. It's not just smart, write, and edit. Even in ChatGPT, what you will find is that you often have to revise your prompts and rewrite them to get a much clearer output. And that's why talking to AI is actually a very critical skill in terms of the effectiveness of AI. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below.